A warm welcome to today's talk. It's Tuesday the 9th of November. Now yesterday we looked at Pfizer's new antiviral drug that shows very high levels of efficacy in preventing serious disease, hospitalisation and people dying, which was interesting. And that drug works in a particular way. It has a particular, what we call a pharmacodynamic action. It works in a particular way. Um, but there's another generic drug called ivermectin that you might have heard of that works in exactly a same way as that. Now, no one's saying that information has been deliberately suppressed for years while millions of people have died. But what we are going to show on this video is conclusive proof from the literature that this modality of action is the same. So if you're up for that, stick around. It's not an easy watch, but I've broken it down as much as I can. Now, just before we crack into that, we need to look at what's happening. So when a virus, when a virus in this case, SARS coronavirus 2, gets into a cell, what happens is it makes lots of proteins. It starts off making proteins, and these proteins are long proteins. So that's one long protein there. There's another long protein there made out of hundreds of amino acids, sometimes a few thousand amino acids, all strung together. Now, the problem is with these long proteins is they're too long for the job that's required. So it's a bit like a building site and a big log of wood arrives. It needs to be trimmed down into bits that fit in your door frames and your window frames. So this needs to be trimmed down. So these proteins need to be trimmed down. Now, how do we trim down a protein, of course, is the question. Well, it has to be done in a biochemical way. And the way it's done, particularly in SARS coronavirus 2, is there's an enzyme called 3CL protease. Now, protease is an enzyme which breaks down protein. So this is 3CL protease, and that will break down proteins. It's what we call proteolytic. And it will take these long proteins and it will chop them into shorter proteins. It's what we call an endopeptidase. So now instead of having two, one long protein, we've got two short ones, and these fit together just nicely to the, to the new virus that we're, we're trying to make, whereas before it was far too long, it had to be chopped. So that is, the, that is the, the protease. Now, these new drugs are what we call protease inhibitors. They stop the protease from working. So here's my, here's my protease here. That's my, that's my 3CL protease that chops up my uh, proteins into the right length. And a protease inhibitor is a bit like this tape, and it's going to stop the protease from working. So there we go. We have, a, we have now inhibited the action of the protease. It's now inhibited. So what I'm going to do now is I have a long protein here. So, it, it, so that one's okay, we've done that one. So that fits in nicely into the virus. But now there's another long protein here that needs processed. So uh, the protease, the 3CL protease comes along, ready to chop this up into shape. And, oh, I can't open it now. So what we've done is we've bind, bounded up the active site of the protease. And, and that's what these drugs do. They bind the active site of the protease and they stop the protease from working. That means they stop the protease from chopping up the big proteins into smaller proteins, into these strings of amino acids so they can't build the virus. So it inhibits viral replication, these protease inhibitors. So that's kind of what is happening here. Now... This is the new Pfizer medication here that's just come out. New Pfizer uh, antiviral. Um, uh, but we're going to compare it with ivermectin in this video. Uh, pharmacodynamic analysis uh, by me. Uh, pharmacodynamics is how the pharmacy works, how the drug works in affecting the body. Now, this is the new Pfizer molecule here. This, this is the new drug. And uh, this is the shape of it here. So it's got three fluorides there. So it's interesting. Uh, that's the shape of the molecule. Fair enough. Now, this is a new molecule. Um, well, certainly on me, but I'm no molecular expert. But so here we have, for example, uh, ritinavir, which uh, was an old uh, antiviral drug that had been using since 1996 and which, in fact, will be given with the new one to work together. So we can see that there, I think we can see that they're different shaped molecules, can't we? There's no Fs on this one, for example. So, so, so that's the different molecule. So if this molecule was patented and this is a new molecule, this molecule will be out of patent, even though it has similar actions. Then if we look at ivermectin, which is also um, out of patent, of course, can't make any money out of ivermectin. Um, then where is it? 
uh, there we go. So that's the ivermectin molecule there, and we see that's a completely different shape to this new Pfizer uh, molecule here. So they're completely different looking molecules. So as a completely different looking molecule, I, I would imagine that that's absolutely fine to, to patent that because it's a new molecule. And when, when you patent a drug, you can make uh, money out of it for the next 20 years after, after the patent date in, 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 mo in most jurisdictions. Of course, by the time the drug gets to market, it's often a bit less than that, but um, th that's the sort of time when you can make some serious money out of these things. Now, um, first of all, um, th this is the new Pfizer drug here, the PFO732, uh, is designed to block the activity of the SARS coronavirus 2 3CL protease, 3CL protease, that. So that 3CL protease now won't work, it won't open, so I can't chop my proteins into the correct length to build a nice new virus. Now, evidence for that, because we always have to give the evidence, the evidence for that is in this paper that we looked at yesterday. So check it out, and there's evidence for that there. That is them saying how exactly how this, uh, this new drug is going to work. That's the site there. So we now know what a protease is. It breaks down proteins into the right length. A protease inhibitor stops the protease from doing that. Therefore, the proteins remain too long. And a 3CL protease is a protease that makes SARS coronavirus 2. And of course, a, a 3CL protease inhibitor will stop it from making SARS coronavirus 2. Therefore, is antiviral. Now, I'm pretty sure that all makes sense. So if you haven't quite got that bit, do, do just go back and watch it again because I'm... Um, that, that's how it works. Now the CL, it stands for, this stands for uh, chymotrypsin-like protease, 3CL, 3 chymotrypsin-like protease. Now um, um, everyone of course in, in bi human biology has heard of uh, chymotrypsin, it's a pancreas release, it's an enzyme released by the pancreas to digest protein, it chops proteins up. So it's a protein chopping up enzyme. So this, um, th 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 this protein, this chymotryptin-like protease inside the virus is working in a very similar way to the chymotryptin that your pancreas produces to digest your proteins. Now going on to the first um, evidence I want to give. Now the first evidence comes from this paper here. So we're going to be looking at this paper here. Um, available, you can check it out for yourself. I always, I always paste the links of course because you don't want to believe what I say. We have to go by the evidence. Identification of SARS coronavirus 2, three chymotryptin like protease inhibitors, which we now know. Remember, the inhibitor is the piece of sellotape that stops the enzyme from working, or the scotch tape, or whatever you call it. That's, that's the sticky tape that stops it from working. That's what's clogged this up, and I, can't, I just can't work these scissors now. Completely useless to chop up my proteins. Um, so th this is a quantitative high throughput screening. So this was looking for compounds that could do this. This was done back on the 3rd of September, 2020. So here they screened all these compounds. Uh, they did a high confirmation screen. They did a finer screen for these compounds and uh, the activity of anti-SARS coronavirus 2 viral infection was confirmed in seven of the 23 compounds. So they found seven compounds that were worth looking at that would uh, have this um, protease inhibiting effect. And this paper also helpfully gives another explanation of it, hopefully the same as mine. But there it is here. So um, here's, the, here's the chain of uh, amino acids forming the protein. But that one's far too long, so it's got to be chopped by that little pair of scissors <laughs> there, which is, the, uh, which is the protease. That's the scissors of the protease, of course. And it chops it up into two bits, which are nice uh, virus-sized protein chunks that can be used in the door frames and window frames or whatever. Uh, anatomical uh, molecular architecture is required for the virus. So um, that was screening compounds. Now, next there was a lot of papers in analysing these. So uh, this is uh, microscopic interactions between ivermectin and key human and viral proteins involved in SARS coronavirus 2 infection. Now, ov obviously, you want the evidence for this. You're not going to take my word for it. Here it is. It's on this paper here from no less than the Royal Society of chemistry and again thankfully all these are available and if you're a biochemist you'll understand that if not you'll just get the gist the same as me <laughs> but uh, I think we have got the gist um, now that's the reference for that one there um, the strength and uh, persistence of the interaction between ivermectin and the binding site of the 3CL protease indicate that a partial inhibition of the catalytic activity in other words the way that the enzyme works 
could have a place as the drug interactions with the main subdomain that define the enzyme <laughs> that define the enzyme binding pocket. Now, the enzyme binding pocket, of course, the protease is an enzyme. So what it's saying here is, so the enzyme's obviously not like a pair of scissors, but if we imagine it's like a pair of scissors, so imagine it's got kind of a blade there, and it's got a, it's got a bit goes around there, and kind of another blade there. Well, the, 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 the enzyme binding pocket is that the substrate will bind into that bit there and hold the substrate while it gets chopped up. But if you block that up with something... So, for example, if you block that up with ivermectin, uh, that no longer works. That, that's what it means. So it's telling us how this is working to block the activity of the 3CL protease. That's what that paper's about, and it makes perfect sense if you do take a bit of time to read it. Now, the next paper is this one. Again, giving you all the evidence. Identification of 3 chymotrypsin like protease inhibitors as potential anti sars coronavirus 2 agents. Um, don't worry if you're not getting all the terminology, I don't always get it myself, but that's this paper here. Out of 13 OTDs, now OTDs, this is called uh, off-target drugs, so ivermectin wasn't originally uh, one of the antivirals they were looking at, they were looking at other existing antivirals. So that's why they're calling it an off-target drug there. But out of 13 off-target drugs, only ivermectin completely blocked, actually, actually blocked by 80%, the uh, three uh, CL protease activity at this particular concentration of ivermectin. Now, um, if we look at this compared to the other, the other drugs, this is particularly useful. So here's all the other drugs that were testing along the bottom here. So they were testing all of these medicines along the bottom here. That's what they were testing. And this is the percentage of three uh, CL enzymic activity present. So the shorter this, the shorter these bits, the more the enzyme was inhibited. So we see that this here, uh, GC3227, that inhibited the enzyme a lot. So the enzyme couldn't chop up the proteins. Um, I don't know what that is. It's not mentioned because it might be toxic. And anyway, all these other ones didn't inhibit it very much, but ivermectin inhibited it a lot. So the ivermectin from this study is greatly inhibiting the ability of the pair of scissors, the 3CL protein, to open. Therefore, it can't chop up the proteins. Therefore, you can't make new virus. So that is what that paper is, uh, is saying. Uh, development, validation and approval of COVID-19 specific drugs takes years, this paper also says. Therefore, the idea of drug repurposing, drugs that are used for other purposes, also known as uh, repurposing, is an important strategy to control the sudden outbreak of life-threatening infectious agents that spread rapidly. We agree completely. Drugs can be repurposed much more quickly than they, we can develop new drugs because we already have a pretty good view of the safety profile, the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics of the drug. The kinetics being the way that the body interacts with the drug and the dynamics being the way that the drug affects the body. Right, next paper, um, next line of evidence here is from this paper here. Again, Royal Society of Chemistry, no less. And all the details are there on that paper as well. So uh, again, feel free to check that out if you would like to. It's all there. Let me give you the gist of what it's saying. Um, from the docking analysis, that's the way that the drug docks into the uh, into the enzymes, the, the way that the drug binds up the, uh, the scissors in this case. Uh, from the docking analysis, ivermectin showed the highest docking score with an average energy of minus 8.5 kilocalories per mole. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know the units, I don't pretend to know it. But it, me it means it bound on quite tightly uh, among all compounds. So it showed the highest docking score. In other words, it cluttered up the enzyme it cluttered up the uh, the three CL enzymes and stopped it working better than all of the other compounds that they looked at. Remdesivir showed the lowest binding energy and highest docking score. So um, remdesivir doesn't work very well now on on, a, on this particular analysis anyway. Now here we have um, some information about uh, remdesivir, which of course is, is has been used for critically ill patients quite a lot. I put this up here because we notice it's uh, three hundred and forty pounds uh, a vial. Uh, £340 of that, that's the indicative price that the UK is paying. 
So that's the link for that from the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. So pretty expensive drug. I believe in the United States, the course costs about $3,000 for a four, was it four or five day course. Can't remember. Anyway, really expensive. And of course, we know ivermectin is available through the World Health Organization at six cents. Six cents. Six cents, about five English pennies um, a tablet. So it's a bit cheaper. It's a bit cheaper. And from this data, um, higher docking score, higher cluttering up ability of the, of the uh, enzyme. Moving on to the next piece of evidence. Um, we've only got a couple more, so stick with it. It is worth it. This is from uh, Future Virology. So this evidence comes from exploring the binding efficacy of ivermectin against key proteins of SARS coronavirus 2 pathogenesis and in silico approach. Now, this is very interesting. In silico means this is uh, computer modeled. Now, this is incredibly clever and way beyond way beyond my ability. It's computerized molecular modeling, but it is a very well recognized science these days. So let's see what this is saying from the future of uh, virology. Uh, we have documented an intense binding of both ivermectin B1A, that, that, that's the type of ivermectin in the drug, and uh, that's the type of ivermectin that's similar but not in the, not in the, not in the tablets. But these, these are the two natural forms that were first identified by William Campbell and Satoshi Amuro, for which they won the Nobel Prize. Um, so we've documented an intense binding effect of both ivermectin and this to the main protease with, with a high binding energy is all that means. In other words, um, the ivermectin well and truly clogs up the uh, 3CL protease, stops it from cutting up the uh, long protein strains, long protein chains into smaller protein chains. Therefore, it stops the viruses being made. So just as a reminder, given that with this evidence, this was from the original Pfizer paper. It is working this way because the original Pfizer, Pfizer paper says that the new Pfizer medication is designed to block the activity of the SARS coronavirus to three chymotryptin-like protease. In other words, it acts the same way as the sellotape round the pair of scissors, as indeed we have given um, evidence for um, ivermectin doing. Now, we, we could we could give many other examples. I might just give... Um, yeah, I'll give a, one other brief example here, I think, because I don't want to get too cluttered. So... Um, just briefly, this is from this evidence here is from this paper here. Always give the evidence. Um, Frontiers in Microbiology, published in January 2021. Again, all the information there, and you can download the PDF, download the article. It's great that these are all uh, freely available, which is just brilliant. Um, molecular docking reveals ivermectin and remdesivir as uh, potential repurposed drugs against SARS coronavirus 2, this paper said. Don't take my word for it. Check it out. That's what it says. Right. With SARS coronavirus 2. Um, now, first of all, um, the ivermectin inhibits the spike protein. This is saying so. As we know, the spike protein in the virus here, the spike protein has to fit into the ACE2 receptor site on the cell surface in order to uh, in order to get into the cell so this is saying that the ivermectin clogs up the spike protein it no longer fits because that's got to be a perfect fit so with SARS coronavirus 2 spike protein uh, ivermectin showed a high binding affinity in other words that hung on good and tight it bound it and that would stop the spike protein from infecting the cell Ivermectin showed a high binding affinity to the uh, to the spike protein, as well as the human cell surfaces receptor of the ACE2. So and that's the other one that it can bind into there. So in other words, not only does it clog up uh, that, it clogs up this as well. Therefore, it's a double reason not to fit. So to, in other words, this is the key here, isn't it? That's the key. And this is the lock. So not only does ivermectin uh, bend the key, it also stuffs plasticine into the lock would be another way to do it. So you're not going to get the binding there. So that's interesting molecular intimation of possible uh, pharmacodynamic uh, modalities of efficacy. In agreement with our findings, ivermectin was found to be docked between the viral spike and the ACE2 receptor. Well, there you go. It clogs, in other words, it clogs that space up there. So you don't get the binding. Therefore, the virus can't stick its RNA into the cell. 
the RNA cannot penetrate, the viral RNA cannot penetrate the cell because it has to dock first in this process called adsorption. In agreement to our findings, ivermectin, yeah, I've said that, so it clogs, clogs up both. Now, it also, uh, binding interactions of selected drugs with human um, ACE2 protein, other ACE2 proteins as well. So it, it's binding up other, other um, ACE2 binding proteins. I'm not going to go into the detail. They're in the paper if you want it. Uh, it all, ivermectin also binds with interaction with selected uh, human ACE2 proteins, as we've said, but that's another sort of set of proteins. Uh, with SARS-2 uh, glycoproteins, ivermectin has the highest binding efficiency to the predicted active site of the protein. In other words, good, so it's clogging up this protein as well, which is great. Um, and again, th th this, other, this other protein here, NSP14, don't know what it is, but it, ivermectin clogs it up, shows the highest binding affinity. And uh, binding interaction with selected drugs with SARS coronavirus 2 PL PL protein. <laughs> I don't know what that is either. But again, it clogs it. It clogs it up. It clogs it up. So whereas the Pfizer drug is only working, as far as we've been told in the Pfizer press release, against one uh, biochemical modality of rep viral replication, uh, the ivermectin is working at many different levels. Now the fact that the 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 Pfizer medicine is only working against one particular uh, biochemical pathway means to me that they that the virus could learn to avoid that it could evolve to be drug resistant as indeed the early uh, antiretrovirals did with HIV so um, that's possible with ivermectin because it's working on so many different levels um, that the uh, the the, um, the the idea that a virus would mutate in a dozen different ways to avoid all those different mechanisms or, or whatever it is six six mechanisms we've talked about today I think all of the, if it, uh, the idea that we get six mutations that could dodge all of those all at the same time is uh, improbable to put it to put it mildly so I've got a message here for uh, for world leaders a brief message to world leaders people that are making the decisions about this come on you all uh, you're not a horse you're not a cow. Um, in other words, world leaders, you're not a horse, you're not a cow. Come on, you all. Um, you've got a human intellect. Let's use it to follow the scientific evidence to save human pain, suffering and death. Thank you for watching.